Hi guys, so this is like the third time I've tried recording this because I'm really bad at editing and uh, I apologize if I don't cover everything I've tried to cover before. Uh, this is me working on um, an illustration that was a creature prompt from Dina Norland. So the creatures included were a hyena, a hummingbird, and a moth. Specifically a lunar moth, but um, it was open to interpretation. You could you could do whatever moths you want. Dina's not super strict. <laughs> uh, in any case, um, so I had drawn this once before. I have the sketches in my sketchbook, and then I went to illustrate it based on my sketches, and I didn't do it the way I wanted. Like, it didn't look right. I didn't like it at all. I got rid of it, and I started again. So if you ever feel like the thing you're, like, from going from your sketch work to a finalized illustration, or even just working on sketch work, that you don't like the results, don't worry about it. Start again. Who gives a shit? No one cares. You do it. It's fun. It, it, it's not a bad thing to start again and try it uh, from a different angle or to try and reincorporate the things you loved about your original sketch. Um, so in the first one, I didn't make it as cute and fat and, and fluffy as this one is, and I was really mad about that, so I redid it. Um, another thing that was going on while I was illustrating this was the quarantine procedures and isolation were starting to come into effect in my province related to COVID. And so I had to cut out a huge chunk of me just sitting there and hand talking while I basically anxiety spewed about COVID. So long story short, wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, isolate uh, when you can, and just do your best to not be a jerk and spread the disease. Just, you know, keep people safe. It's the least you can do. All right, so moving on from that, stay safe, don't get COVID, please. Oh my God, please don't. Uh, <laughs> this design was very fun and very cute and right up my alley. Uh, and I had gone through a few different iterations, uh, as you'll see in my sketchbook in a few minutes. But all in all, I really, really enjoyed this design and I kind of want to draw it again, maybe with different combinations of hummingbirds and moths. The hyena part is just sort of there for a few design elements, but I think it's a cute species and I would like to continue it. <laughs> any case, um, yeah, let's go to Sketchbook Megan and she'll tell you all about her process. <clears throat> Wait for this to dry. And in the meantime, here's my sketch pages for it. I was basically, I really liked this one with him sleeping and like, he's tiny, he's small. So I thought it'd be cute to have like the, like I'll go behind the design here. <clears throat> Originally, I thought that the one was a bat, so I started to design based on bats and stuff, and then I realized it's not a bat, it was a hyena. But at least two of the three were small and fate. So, like, I love drawing little fat hummingbirds. And there's these bats that I have a lot of trouble drawing, but I love them, they're the little white puffball ones. And then the moth I liked, I think it was a luna moth is the actual design, so I went with um, a little bit more for the wing design and stuff for that. But um, I really like like those, oh, what are they called? They're pink and yellow. They're a little pink and yellow fat little moth, but I like those. And then the hyena, I think I ended up going with a striped hyena. So I sort of drew out the source animals first so I could see what traits they have in common. Um, I also like to just draw them again so that I can, if I stylize them as I draw them from reference work, it kind of gives me an idea of like what shapes I would do when I um, combine them because like, if I draw a hyena realistically, and a hummingbird realistically, and the moth realistically, right from the get-go, I'm not actually going to know what things would look similar in my style versus what parts of them look similar in reality, if that makes sense. So like, if I'm gonna draw a hummingbird realistically, this one's not super realistic, but like, the body won't be nearly as fat, you know what I mean? Like, it'll just be sort of slim, have a long beak, be normal, same with the moth, like, it'll just be a regular moth and a hyena. Like, here's some more stylized ones, but there's one that's a little more true to form. There's not quite as many similarities between these three. But as you go down, and I make these feet humming bears, and these little feet, little moth, because I was like, I'm gonna draw it the way I wanna draw it. And like, I liked doing the little proboscis beak almost instead of doing a, um, like, the curled up little proboscis. That resulted in me realizing, like, I like a flat, fat body, I like them fluffy. And then as far as the hyena goes, I didn't really have a lot that kind of jived with the rest of this, but I thought, you know, they have that furry tail. They got the nice spine of fur. I could add the um, stripes, because I decided with a striped hyena and that big mohawk. So then I started sketching over here. So first I sort of did a hummingbird with a hyena tail and like some of the markings from 
the Luna Moth. And I was like, that's not great. I want it to be a small fat bee. So then I tried, instead of a long beak, I gave it that like little proboscisy nose that the moth has. And the little antennas, and I like that better. But then I decided, oh yeah, here. I wanted it to be so cute and so sad. Um, I decided, what if I did it more like a little griffin? Because then it's got the four legs like the hyena. And instead of like being a bird bird, it's got like the markings and colors from the hummingbird and the size of the hummingbird. And I kind of went from there and I ended up with a design I really liked, this little like mothy hyena griffin thing. And I wanted it to be small, like hummingbird sized, it's going to get little flowers. And that's sort of how I came up with the design. And so then the first time, this was, again, I drew this February 11th. So like a month ago, over a month ago. And so then my first attempt at doing it, I did this and I realized I lost all of the like fun, fat, cutesy character when I drew this. It's just sort of lumpy and sad looking and I didn't like it. And who knows, I may like, oh, whoops, I may color it or something later and just like if I ever do a store update, put it up for sale. So if somebody really wants it, they can have it, but like, meh. So that's why I redrew it today and I decided to go with much more fat and much more cute and I'm much happier with it. So I'm gonna let this ink dry, erase all the lines, and then I'll paint it if I have time before work. Um, if I don't have time before work, at least you gotta see me ink and draw it and I'll probably paint it later. But I think he's pretty cute. A little fit, little guy. I didn't tuck the little proboscis under, I kinda left it hanging loose cause I thought, I don't know, looked kinda cute. Yeah, so as you can see, the design changed a bit between the two illustrations, but the core root of the design stayed the same. Small and fat and cute. Um, and yeah, I did not realize that I started illustrating, like, doing that in February. And I'm pretty sure this recording is from, like, late March to early April. <laughs> oh, well. Sometimes things just take time. Uh, so yeah, again, as I've been obsessed lately with the uh, intergalactic set from Jasmine Fay, I was planning on using that again. Uh, I kind of liked using that uh, paint for... I was thinking about the iridescence of hummingbirds. And then even in, although a lunar moth doesn't really have um, iridescent wings, there's a lot of like moth and butterfly varieties that do. So I thought, eh, iridescence in at least two of the creatures, uh, even though hyena is kind of not iridescent, although it'd be pretty fabulous if it was. So I definitely was planning the illustration with those paints in mind. Uh, I put down a base colors though with the koi watercolor set that I have. Uh, and I decided to do the hyena markings, but in um, hummingbird colors, which overlap again with moth coloration. So I went with a ruby-throated hummingbird for the, or no, not ruby-throated, what is it? There's a kind that has the little um, X shape on its face. And I think that's like looking up different hummingbirds, that's the one that I took the inspiration from. So I have the little red face on it, which I thought was pretty cute. And then I went and did the hyena stripes, but I did them in uh, greens so that it matched again that hummingbird uh, body coloration and I basically went in with my dark stripes first let them dry as I painted the little face and then I went in with a lighter shade and went over the whole body so I doubled up on top of those stripes a nice thing with watercolors is you can do that pretty easily if you've got a clear idea you don't always have to work necessarily light to dark um, just as long as you know that you know your darks are being placed very specifically and you're not planning on lightening them up you can do them first and then layer over top if you want so that's what I did here uh, I also went through and I you can see here I've kind of pulled some pigment out of the tail just to lighten it up a bit and I think I went again with another shade because I wasn't in love with how this green was a little more like grass green, pea green, not um, not the like iridescent green I was looking for, or like uh, tealy, turquoisey green. Uh, I decided to keep the red though as the accent color instead of doing too many different colors. I thought, I mean, basically I've made him a little Christmas hummingbird griffin, but I did uh, the lunar moth markings on the wings, but I did them in this like pinky red instead of in, or magenta red, sorry, instead of in, uh, I think they have like a gray blue colored marking or like a dark green marking uh, and basically just try to find anywhere that I could reincorporate that red color from the face to keep it uh, tied together and you can see the tail I did the little like uh, 
the moth tail wispy bits again in that red tone to kind of pull that back in. Uh, and here I'm going through and I'm just adding some little fur spots. So I do like little dashes to indi like, uh, indicate rough fur and the like. Uh, and I decided to do that just again in that dark green so that it kind of blends in. I did a bit of it with the black micron, but I went in again and did it just in the same colors that are being used in the illustration to sort of um, make them a little more cohesive, stand out a little less so it kind of melts into the background. And then comes the fun part. I started mixing up my iridescent paints. You'll notice on the face it went from that like magenta ruby red to a little more of a... Uh, I don't want to say an orangey pink, but it was just a little darker than I liked, which hindsight, I should have done the face much lighter before, knowing that I was layering up a colored iridescent pigment on top. But it still worked out. It just wasn't exactly what I wanted, which I think is also, again, why I kind of redid the body a little bit. Um, here I am checking to make sure I got iridescent pigment everywhere, because the iridescence is particles in the paint. It's not the paint itself. like. Like I can spread the pigment around, but I won't be necessarily spread the uh, iridescence around, so I had to kind of fiddle with it. And then in order to get the green iridescence, um, I combined a couple different colors, but you'll see here it's a little darker than I expected. So I went in with the antenna first, and then I think I watered down it like a little bit, just so that when I went in, it wouldn't be so dark on the rest of the body. Um, which I don't think I did right here. I think I did it afterwards. Again, I, I illustrated this a couple months ago <laughs> and drew it even earlier than that. So it, I'm trying to remember what I did do and what I didn't do. And yeah, I think here I was seeing that like, because I wanted to leave the, um, the wings uh, empty so that it would look like there was like a clear opaque layer on top to lighten up that space underneath the wings. I was a little bit nervous because I was seeing how different the darkness was compared to it. So I went in and just did the wings instead of adding any pigment. I just did them with that mercury again, which is a transparent, just um, iridescent shade. And I think I ended up picking up a little bit of green with it. So it sort of spread it around a little, but I don't know. It worked out because it, it all stayed within the wings, uh, constraints of the wings. So it, it was fine if it spread a little extra pigment. It still looked intentional. So happy little accidents. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I basically did the whole thing in various iridescence because I love this paint set. <laughs> I think I added a little more iridescence to the face in an attempt to get it to be a lot more shiny. Um, and you can see me tilting it back and forth to try and see the iridescence. I don't know why I added iridescence shade to the sleepy sleeping bubble, but past Megan's a mystery and future Megan's an enigma. So here we go. I uh, in order to differentiate some more body parts, I did go in with not um, as dark the first time. I basically watered it down just a tiny bit and then chose some pieces, like parts of his body to uh, darken up to kind of pull that out, give him a little more variance so that his values and his tones were a little different. So he kind of had different body parts instead of just one homogenous dark-ish green. Um, I think that is it. I think my little bean is all done. So here's a shot outside where you can really see the iridescence. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Bye.